of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for Auto Repair with Personal Care here on The Source. Of course you do. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. When I was a kid, Robin... I had an older cousin, and, and when I say older, he was like 20 years older than me. I was just a little kid. He was already married. Oh, he could have been your dad. He could have been my dad, yes. He was much older than me, and uh, I can remember going to his house as a kid, and I and basically I would be playing with his kids, and, and uh, um, but he always had baseball on on the TV. I mean, I, I, it seemed like every time he went over there, baseball was on TV. He This was a guy who loved baseball, and he was a very successful businessman, living living in, let's see, at first it would have been Long Island, New York, and I think later on he moved to Connecticut, and then later on to California, I think the San Francisco area, or something like that. Uh, and and then, in, in his older years, he decided to uh, participate in one of those fantasy baseball camps, mm-hmm. you know, where he paid you know thousands of dollars to play with some of the, the, yeah. the baseball players. And, wow. and so I, f- I found this baseball card in my desk, that was from that 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 visit. Now he's eighty something by now, uh-huh. so this is a long time ago that he did this. But I saw that card. I thought, wasn't that a cool thing to do? He, I guess his dream, if I'm going to analyze him looking back, probably was to become a baseball player. Probably, mm-hmm. but it didn't happen for him. But he did have that one experience, if not more. He may have done it more than once. So when I was reading about our next guest, I thought of my cousin Jackie. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. John Kearney is on the phone. He is a scientist. He's a Hi, prof- he's a professor. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. He is a professor Good in the morning. departments of family medicine, psychiatry. Yeah, I love that. Which part. I got to pick his brain a little bit about that and behavioral neurosciences. Uh, it goes on and on and on. He's got so many different credentials, but he's written a book about baseball. It's called Immaculate: A History of Perfect Innings in Baseball. Doctor Kearney, good morning, sir. Good morning. Hmm. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, a little place called Ridgeville, Ontario, which is about an hour south of Toronto in Canada. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, an hour south of Toronto. You would think that would be New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Buffalo. It's almost <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, I used to, I used to uh, go to a record, uh, m- a music, uh, what was it, a music publisher in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to picture south of Toronto. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the lake? <laughs> what is yeah, that? Yeah, right. Well, you know, it is. It is. I can actually see the, uh, you know, they have a big tower in Toronto called the CN Tower. Right. I can see it. I can see it from my uh, from from my downtown. It's uh, right across Lake Ontario. Your geography is excellent, Larry. Wow. So when I was describing my cousin, was I describing you? I don't think I ever had any any hope or dream of being in the in the in the bigs, um, but I certainly love the game. Um, I, I played it as a child, um, and I I've been a fan for a long, long time. So uh, yeah, I certainly certainly would love to be as skilled as uh, as as those guys to play in the big leagues. But that, that's certainly not me. So why why, <laughs> but, did, why did baseball become your sport of choice? And was it something when you were just, I guess it's, as a child you were playing it, you loved it. Were you good at it? Uh, no, I mean, I was, I was the, I, we played it in, you know, we, we had pickup games. Uh, you know, we played it after school. We played it in the summertime. I played on rec leagues and things like that, but I, I didn't, I didn't make it very far, uh, beyond that. Um, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I love sports, so, I, baseball is, is kind of my, my summer sport. Um, but I, I, for me, I think too, I, I really got into the game a little bit later in life. I was, I was sort of in my, I guess, in my early 30s, and uh, I, I started reading about the history of the game, and it really fascinated me. So I, I think at that time, I, I got more interested in, in the numbers and the stories behind some of the greats in the game, and, and that really was, that kind of led to this book in, in some ways. And uh, you don't just hold a, a pro baseball in uh, reverence. You're also a season ticket holder with the Buffalo Bisons. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, you know, the, I mean, for me, I I absolutely love the game, and and there's quite there's nothing quite like AAA ball in a lot of ways. I mean, you see, you see the two extremes, right? You see players who who will never advance, you know, beyond the AAA level, and then of course you see 
people on their way and you see people on injury rehab and all kinds of different things and buffalo um is is close to home and coca-cola field which is the home of the bisons is just a beautiful old style ballpark so there's nothing better than a summer day watching a game uh in buffalo you you also work with children is that right and and as a psychiatrist you work with children's uh mental health yeah, my, my area of interest actually is in motor development, so there's a, there's a bit of an overlap there, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in how children uh, move and learn to move and the long-term consequences of, of movement and physical activity and exercise for, for health and well-being, both mental well-being and also physical well-being. So I guess that's the, uh, the link to psychiatry there is, is my interest in physical activity and its relationship with things like depression and anxiety. So you can help children who were born without much uh, uh, physical movement then? Right. We're really, we do quite a lot of work, and I, I talked to you guys a little while ago about it, actually, and, and coordination difficulties and, and what that means for children in terms of their long-term health and development. That's where your name sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Now so, we got it. So the other day, um, well, let me tell you this, getting back to the baseball part of this discussion, as much as you downplayed your own skills, you would you would be a, a major league baseball player compared to me. I, I, I'm, ho- I'm horrible <laughs> at this. I was horrible as a kid. So we were in McDonald's the other day, and they had on the TV screen uh, a, a, a game, a, a little league game, Japan versus Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm watching the, one of the little boys, I think it was one of the Mexican players, and he's he's got his bat, and he's and, I, and I'm thinking, I said to Robin, gosh, I'm remembering this as a kid. I was horrible at this. I had no idea how to hit that ball. It was just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come at me, I'm going to do what the coach told me to do, and I don't even, if it hits it, it's going to be an accident. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this. And, 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 and yet, in my adult life, I've come to realize that, and here's the psychiatrist part of it. Of course, I'm just I'm just not a real psychiatrist. I'm a radio guy, but <laughs> but but I don't let him fool you. But anything that we have a passion for, it's like we make up our mind. We're going to understand how to do it. In my case, it would mm. be it would be music. I, mm. I just wanted to know how to do this thing that fascinated me. So that little yeah. Mexican boy, or maybe you when you were a little boy, or my cousin. I mean, it really was interesting to you. How do you connect that bat with that ball? Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it's a bit of a mystery, and and that's part of the allure of the game. I think it's it's a very complex game. I mean, I have two young children, six and ten, and uh, my son plays on a, a traveling baseball team. He's he's very good, and I'm in awe of him because you know clearly there was no direct genetic link between my ability and uh-huh. his ability. Um, but he, st- you know, we started very. The difference I think was we started really young. I mean, my my parents were immigrants to Canada. They came from uh, Scotland and, and baseball was not a game that they, they were exposed to. In fact, most of the sports that we play in North America were, were totally unfamiliar to them. Hockey, football, you know, they, they didn't play any of that. Um, I, I've had the advantage of where my children perhaps have had the advantage, sometimes it may be a curse, to, since they were very, very young. We, we go outside and I soft toss them a ball and they, they swing at the air and, and they miss and you just keep doing it and eventually over time they start to learn how to connect and where yeah. their bodies need to be and what they should be looking at and um, and then it becomes natural. I think the, the difference for you and I was it wasn't natural and maybe we didn't have that uh, extra coaching that we that was required or, or as you say maybe it just wasn't wasn't a passion at that that point in time yeah. you, you put your efforts somewhere else so with with scottish uh, roots the, the, do you like golf I do. I, I, again, I can't. I can't claim to be. That's a frustrating sport too. I seem to be drawn to these frustrating sports. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least My the game. ball. At least the ball is in. It's not moving. It's st- It's right there. <laughs> At, you know, at least you can see where it is, you know? So, you know what, Larry? Sometimes it doesn't even move when I take a swing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have the uh, uh, Detroit Tigers that you talk about sometimes. Do you feature the bird in there at all? Um, I No, I don't think he's part of the collection, actually. Oh, okay, because I know he was, you know, uh, all the um, newscasters said he was kind of arrogant, but the people loved him because he was just, you know, walking around like a bird before he pitched the ball. And <laughs> yeah, was peacock, just kinda, right? yeah, a peacock. Yeah, a peacock. Tell And tell uh, Dr. Kenny why you brought that up. Oh, because yeah, my... Yeah, what's the connection? <laughs> because uh, my uh, uh, stepdad was his bodyguard for five years when he played <laughs> oh, the Tigers, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, he, he 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 needed a bodyguard, I guess, because he was so popular. So <laughs> that's kind of cool stuff. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. This is a fun one too. Dr. John Kearney, his book is called Immaculate: A History of Perfect Endings in Baseball. We'll be right back. If you're a baseball f- f- aficionado, why don't you call in with a question? <laughs> we don't know much about baseball. We'll ask you about the book when we come back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A flood watch is in effect through 8 p.m. this evening. Mostly cloudy today and tonight with some showers and thunderstorms around. There could be some flooding downpours. The high today, 85 to 89. Tonight's low, 72 to 76. Clouds and some intervals of sun tomorrow with a couple of showers and thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon, the high 88 to 92. Wednesday, variable cloudiness with a couple of showers and thunderstorms, high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Seniors Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. All right, 14 minutes before 10 o'clock. Dr. John Kearney is on the phone with us. Let's talk about the book. We've kind of been all over the map with him, and so we need to be fair to the book. The book is called Immaculate, A History of Perfect Endings in Baseball. The one thing I want to say, doctor, before we get into that is this, that again, going back to my naivete about, about baseball, I thought back then that the batter was the important guy. And it turns out, and I learned this years later, that the pitcher is actually the, the important guy. I, I just never got that. I just never got that was as a kid, that the pitcher is... One. And, so, and I never understood how a pitcher could even throw a ball so it was different than any other way that you throw a ball, so... <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, that's one of the other mysteries of the game, right? How, how does that thing curve? You know, that's uh, that's pr- it's pretty neat. Well, you know, I think in this era, batters do get a lot of attention because uh, we're in an era, well, we have been at least for, for a while, in an era hitting, and we certainly were in the 90s, of course, um, and, and home runs are exciting, but but boy, you know, pitching is is essential. Ask any any baseball insider, and they will tell you 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 start with the bullpen, and you start with uh, your starting rotations, and and then you work out. Um, you got to have good pitching. So, so to, to just sit in a game where the pitcher he has an immaculate inning, where all of the all of the batters are are struck out, right? That's that's mm-hmm. what we're, we're talking that's right. about here. Okay, uh, that I mean, that's is that exciting for the spe- from the spectator point of view? I guess it is if you're on if you're rooting for that team, right? If you're rooting for the pitcher team well if you're rooting for and if you're you're interested in baseball i mean they, so so an immaculate inning is is three batters out uh retired on nine pitches nine consecutive strikes uh so you know that at first at first blush you might think oh well that's you know that's got to happen quite a bit uh but in fact it it's really really rare and that that's the the whole idea and the purpose for the book so we went in the book back to to 1889 uh when the first immaculate inning was was officially recorded in the record books and if you go from 1889 to 2014 there's only been 73 pitchers in the whole history of the game that have pitched an immaculate inning and and they've it's happened 77 really? times. Yeah. Has, has there been wow. an immaculate game, a whole game? Well, there've been the, what we call perfect games, right? There's been there's certainly been those and there's been to the to, to present day, although we had a no-hitter last night actually in the Cubs game. Um, but a per- perfect game would be would be no walks, no uh, no walks issued, uh, no one on base, uh, all the, all 27 batters retired. Uh, there's been 23 of those in the history of ga- of the game, and that, so that's even r- more rare. But but for baseball people, the perfect game is well known as as 
has is the no hitter. The immaculate inning really can be uh, some, some people have never heard of it before, and I think it's because it, it's one of those things that can happen really darn fast. I, I mean, in a game situation, you figure nine strikes and and the, the side is done. The only thing you may remember is, boy, that was a really short you know top or bottom of the inning. Uh, so it's something that's very easily missed and. Unlike a perfect game, I mean, if you if you secure a perfect game, if it's a complete perfect game, then you know the pitcher and the team wins. Uh, in an immaculate inning, you, we, we've got pitchers sometimes it has a, an effect on the course of the game, other times it, it doesn't. So it's one of those things that's really easy to miss, but because of its rarity, it's it's something I think we need to celebrate a little bit more because it's quite an achievement. So the pitcher from the immaculate inning, since you referenced top and the bottom, so the the pitcher from the one team strikes out the other guys, and then the pitcher for the other guys strikes out the first team then. No, no. It's, oh. uh, it, it, actually, I don't think that's ever happened in the history of the game. That's that's an interesting one. No, I just mean when it's it, it's the pitcher when it's when it's the team's turn to pitch or to be on oh. defense, they strike out nine batters. Oh, or, sorry, okay. strike out uh, three batters on nine pitches. Wow. So explain how the book is set up. Each each chapter is uh, each inning. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, you know it's really easy in baseball to just talk about the numbers and and you can tell you know phd researcher i i'm not afraid of stats i like the stats but <laughs> i didn't want the book to be just about the stats so the first chapter goes over the history how often it's happened if there's any pattern you know does this occur more often in later innings and early innings and all that kind of stuff that the that the baseball number geeks really love but then the remainder of the book is really the, the, the built around the, the the innings themselves but the main focus is really on the pitcher and the pitcher's story. Uh, you know, how I got interested in this topic was actually back in 2013, a relief pitcher for the Jays named Steve Delabar recorded a perfect inning. And what struck me at the time was, well, two things. One, I had never heard of an immaculate inning before, so I was curious. I wanted to learn more. But the second thing was, Steve Delabar was an interesting story. Here's a guy who never really made it out of the minor leagues, uh, plagued with injuries basically had to leave the game. No one would sign him. He went back to his hometown. He started coaching kids. Uh, he was training kids to be pitchers, and he was working with something called a weighted ball. And so it's a heavy ball. If you learn to throw the ball heavy, it'll, it'll increase your arm strength and get your velocity up. And while he was learning how to use it, he realized that it was affecting his own arm and that his velocity was actually moving up, and he was getting back into big league territory in terms of how fast he could pitch. And uh, long story short, he ended up back in the majors uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays and just had an amazing 2013 season, pitched an immaculate inning, uh, made it to the All-Star game that year. So here's, here's a guy, here's, to me, that's an interesting story. Uh, it's probably a story that not a lot of people know because he's a journeyman pitcher. He's not, he's not an All-Star all the time. He's not, not going to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but he, he's got an interesting story. And I thought, could you write a book where... You talk about the achievement, you talk about the numbers, but you also talk about the human interest side of the story, and that's really the focus of the book. Oh, and that's the part that would attract me. When I listen to sports radio, we have all weekend long here in WLC at Sports Radio, and, and uh, I just love that, that those conversations. I, I'm more interested in the human stories than I am in the numbers and, and the statistics. It's just be, uh, and I wanted it, yeah, I wanted it to be a book, and I wanted it to be a book that that you could pick up. Larry, my wife, is, is she, she's a sport fan. She likes baseball, but she's certainly not a rabid fan. But she absolutely loved the book because she liked the stories and she learned something about the game. I, I tried to weave a bit of the history into the game, too, when it was appropriate. So when there were immaculate innings pitched in the 70s, I talked about the changes to the pitching mound and the other changes that occurred after, after the late 60s and early 70s, what was going on in terms of free agency at that time, and those kinds of things. Hmm. See, the way, you, the way you told the story about how he trained himself, uh, in, in the one story that you've told so far, the... The thing that gets me is it's 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 the human passion. I, I love how somehow we figure out how to grow and how to develop. I, I was walking through mm. a, a, a a freshly paved parking lot one time at an old job I had, and there was a piece of grass growing through it already. And I and I said, "Wow! I mean, that grass must have really wanted to get through that." Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I think that about us as humans, you know, anything yeah. we really try to do, we really are determined to make happen for ourselves we figure out a way to do it and that's what that spoke to me when you when you just told that story mm -hmm. 
it's interesting too that 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 he did it while he was actually trying to teach others how to play the game. I think that's another interesting side of it too. He wasn't actually thinking about himself. Oh, is that right? Really, yeah. He was trying to. He was really trying to learn how to use a weighted ball so he could teach it to the kids in the in the in the sport camp that he was that he was working at or the training center. And and just so happens, you know, there's no way to there's no better way to learn something than to try to do it yourself. And it, it just became one of those things where he he just noticed a change in his pitching arm. But I agree with you. I mean, there, there's a lot of stories like that. Of uh, you know, I, I think what's interesting about the the collection of pitchers that's in this book is that you have. Uh, some of the greatest names in the game that that are familiar to uh, even the casual fan, uh, Nolan Ryan, Randy right. Johnson, right. Lefty Grove, probably less so. He's a famous pitcher from the 20s. Uh, Sandy Koufax. You know, these are the, those guys. By the way, all pitched more than one immaculate innings in their career, which is downright amazing. But then you have other names, uh, Pat Reagan. Here's a guy, <laughs> you'd have to dig hard to find stories on Pat Reagan. He, uh, he pitched in the, in the ni- 1914 era, that, the sort of early part of the, the 20th century, and he really had very little in his career that was remarkable, except he pitched an immaculate inning. What's interesting is how he did it. Uh, he he's clearly was a bit of a showman, so after the first strike and the first batter, he turned to the audience and he tipped his cap and he and no one applauded because you know who's going to applaud because someone pitches one strike in a game. Oh, uh, but he but he pretended as though everybody was applauding and he bowed <laughs> oh, and oh really, and then he did it again and again and again and he, and right up until the last batter and by by of course by that point people were really cheering for him because they were watching something really amazing and then on the last batter he didn't because I think he finally realized wait a minute I'm on the verge of something really special here I better I better pay attention you know and that's uh, stories like that that. To, to me, are just they're they're humorous. They, they reflect a certain era of the game. When you think of that, think of that era. That was Ty Cobb and you know other famous players. Baseball was uh, was vaudeville in many ways at that point in time, and and very much a showman. Obviously, Pat was in that group. And uh, uh, so, to me, going back in time and looking at those records and looking at, at at those and hearing those stories and how they've survived over time, I wanted to capture that. And that's really what the book is. I, that that absolutely gave me chills because you did not dwell, like you said, on the most famous names, and I think the unfamous are the most interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I, I and again, it gives you an opportunity to think about what the game was like at that point in time, right? So, you know, the, you, to me, you can use the stories to actually inform uh, about the game. Another pitcher, also from the early period, second pitcher actually in in baseball history to do it was a guy named Rube Waddell. And uh, Rube Waddell was a Hall of Fame pitcher, uh, very very well known to to baseball historians and and to big fans of the game. Uh, this is here's a psychiatry connection for you. Rube Waddell probably had ADD, ADHD, maybe even autism or Asperger's. Uh, he was a really unusual guy and and uh, quite a handful to to coach. And he, there's great stories. Uh, so, you know, you wonder how some of them. You wonder how much are embellished, but you know, great stories right. about him just loving fire engines. And and the huh. fear that they would have was that if the fire engine went by during a game, he'd run and chase it just to to go to the fire, the scene of the fire, and and watch what's what was happening he died tragically at a very young age actually save trying to from complications of trying to save a village he lived in a small town and there were rising floodwaters and he was out all night with a group of men sandbagging trying to save this village and he eventually got pneumonia and died actually quite oh, young wow. so again it's it's stories like that that i think people who are uh, not just fans of the game but fans of interesting human stories uh, would, would get something out of the book. Which is exactly why I would like it, I'm sure. Uh, the book is called Immaculate, A History of Perfect Endings in Baseball. Uh, Dr. John Kennedy, do you use the doctor, your doctor title on the, in the book? No, I don't. And you can call me John, so I keep, I keep All right. forgetting to tell you that, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> John Kearney. John Kearney on the phone. All right. Uh, so it, do you have a website for the book? Or I'm, I'm guessing all the bookstores and, and, and websites that sell books have it, right? Yep, if you, you know, uh, all, the, all the bookmasters, uh, Noble and Barnes, but certainly Amazon.com, it, it, it's easy to get from there. The, it's a Canadian publisher. It's a small press called Mosaic. It's M-O-S-I-A. 
AIC, and uh, you can get it from that website. There's a little bit more information about it there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, John Kearney 68, and uh, I, I tweet out some stuff about the book and our other research and things like that as well. And the 68, your number? 68 is my birthday. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you if it's month and day or year. That you got to figure that one out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that was great, John. Thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Um, come back with the next. Well, who knows? Maybe the next time it'll be about cooking or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mention it, Larry, oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'd love to come back. Thanks but so much, guys. Thanks it, for having me I, on. And by the way, food is my favorite part of a baseball game. That's my favorite yeah. part. My, me too. <laughs> I have a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Kearney. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. A prayer walk in Harris County, Texas last night for slain deputy